if life was nothing but green lights and we didn't have yellows and reds, things that make us pause, hardships, crises, times for introspection, then what the hell would it all be for? We need the yellows and the reds. That's how we evolve. That's how hopefully there's some ascension to our being. That's how we give some credit to time and growing older. If we were the same person today that we were 20 years ago, then what, what, I mean, what the hell are we doing? everybody, this is book two. We are here to talk about my book called Green Lights. Yes, those things that tell us in life, go, proceed. We want more, uh-huh. Atta boy, atta girl, yes. It's about choices I made, good fortune I took advantage of. But it's not only for me, I think it speaks to the human experience that we can all see ourselves in some of these stories and some of the things that I've crossed, some of the things I've learned, some of the things I stole, some of the things that can help others enjoy this rodeo of life that we're in so hopefully we can all get our eight seconds let's see what we got aloha mr matthew mcconaughey it is me brevin rock i am an online creator based in hawaii singer songwriter actor actress athlete, activist science Why? <laughs> today i wanted to ask you a couple questions about your new book green light that i just finished reading i feel like the first page is so captivating and it definitely hooks you and it definitely sets the tone for the rest of the book this is not a traditional memoir yes i tell stories from the past but i have no interest in nostalgia sentimentality or the retirement that most memoirs require this is not an advice book either although i like preachers i'm not here to preach and tell you what to do I just wanted to ask, did you ever consider the consequences of being so forthcoming and raw, especially at a time where people are so quick to judge? Great question, Bretman. Bretman, you got a lot of things going. Consequences of being so raw and honest. Yes, I considered it. But I was also like, there's great freedom that I felt about being honest about who I am where I've succeeded, where I've failed. I enjoy my successes and times I've pulled things off much more because of how many times I've failed at something. So I'm like, well, let's tell the book about the failures too. Let's tell the parts about where I step in <laughs> where I think I got it all under control and I do not, where I do not live up to who I was trying to be. I say at the end of the book, I have crossed many truths in my life that I know and believe to be true. Have I lived up to them? No, I'm working on it. What are we really doing in this? Life, what's it really all about? What's it really matter to show where we failed? If anything, I would say to my 15 year old self, go fail more. If anything, I would say to you, go fail more, forget them. Those people on the sideline that are saying the thumbs down or calling you something or being snarky, they're on the sidelines for a reason. <laughs> what you got next? I really resonate with your story about your dad giving you approval to go to film school and I quote, don't have assets, and how shortly after he passed, you felt his presence and his spirit on set of Days and Confused. Yeah. And I really felt these words because just a couple of days after my dad passed away, I had to go accept my award for People's Choice Awards. I honestly felt his spirit on the red carpet, and I just felt like a really proud son. My question is, these days, where do you most often hear your dad's voice? or feel his spirit, and how do you use that to go and carry on with your life? Great question. The death of my father, major red light. Losing my father, like it is for many, was my most seminal rite of passage into manhood. No more safety net. No one above the law and government looking after me anymore. It was time for me to grow up. Time to say goodbye to the boy I had been, building tree houses in the middle of the night. Just keep living is something that came to me right after my dad died. And it was something that came in me trying to understand, hey, what does this mean? He's physically no longer here. But I can keep him alive by keeping his spirit alive. If I want to talk to him, speak out loud, talk anytime. I want to call him, pick up the damn phone, call him. 
have a conversation. He's not gonna physically pick it up, but anytime you wanna do that. Every time I have a piece of work come out, I always see him there in my mind's eye. And then ultimately, the biggie, the doozy, is I miss him as the, the grandfather he would have been to my kids and the father-in-law he would have been to my wife, Camilla. Yeah. Hey, Matthew. Hey. I'm Hannah Stocking. Most people know me from the YouTube channel, Hannah Stocking. It is such an honor to talk to you. I've seen so much of your work, my favorite being Dallas Buyers Club. I find your ability to manage such a successful career with such a successful personal life so inspiring. Thank you. You've been journaling for 35 years, which is pretty incredible. And honestly, I imagine it took a pretty big dose of courage to dig them up and go through them. What made you start journaling and what kept you journaling all these years? What made me start journaling and what kept me journaling? Look, I started journaling at 14 for the same reason that probably any 14 year old starts journaling. Why do I have pimples on my face? Why did Gretchen Donnelly break up with me? What's this peach fuzz growing down there for? Uh, you know, all, all those things. You're going through puberty and adolescence. You're just like, what's going on? And then I continued to write. I started to write down how do I see the world? What makes me laugh? What makes me smile? What makes me angry? The journals became really me trying to get to know myself. I wrote in times that I was lost. And then I continued to write, thankfully, in times that I felt found. It's easy to go to the journal when we're confused. It's easy to go to the journal when we don't know, when we have all the questions. Why? What's this all about? But we should also go to the journal when we are in the know, when things are happening, man. When we're like, yes, my relationship and reverb, I'm dancing with life and life's giving it back to me. The reason we don't write at those times is because when we're succeeding, we usually think, oh, I found it. This is it. This is the mean. I'll never leave this existence. Eh, hang on. You will lose it. You will get in a rut again. We will be lost off frequency again. So write down, dissect when we're succeeding. Because I know for me, I was, it's helped me to go back at times when I'm in a rut and recalibrate and get back on track. That's why I kept journaling, and I still write more now than I did then. All right. Look, this is the Hanukkah song. What? Can we just all get along? I'm Matthew, I'm Rachel. And I'm Rita from the Onyx family, which started off as a family YouTube channel. And now it's expanded into a multimedia brand. So we read your book, we really enjoyed it, and we have a few questions. One of the things that really stood out to me was your mom. You said she forgave herself very quickly and carried zero stress. Right. As a mother, mom guilt, it just seemed to come immediately when I had children. So I was just like, how did she carry zero stress? What do you think your mom learned to give herself green lights so quickly in life? What do I think my mom learned in order to give herself green lights in life? My mom's 89 years old and rocking, has a memory, has perspective, and a lot of wisdom. She just really cuts the chafe when it comes to, I'm not gonna make a mountain out of that molehill. My mom and dad were married three times, divorced twice to each other. I went up to her a couple years ago, and I was like, Mom, no one forgives themselves quicker than you. I'm like, I don't know how you do it. She's like, oh, yes, honey. Every single night when I lay my head on the pillow, I go through a mental list of the things that I would change, that I want to do better, that I, that, I, that, that, that I feel guilty about. But the thing is, Matthew, when I wake up in the morning, I forgot them. <laughs> It is why she's great friends with my great friend, Woody Harrelson. Boy, you're gonna run into crisis. What's your way of dealing with it? Forget about it. Move on. <laughs> so in your book, I was drawn by the section that talked about unbranding right. before you rebrand. I, I really never heard of that concept before. Right, we're actually going through something really similar in our careers and we can vouch for how hard it is to actually step into the unknown. Right, so I was wondering, what advice would you have for us as we make that kind of transition? Yep, you're bringing up a time where, in my career, where I was very successful at romantic comedies. So successful that actually the dramas that I was interested in doing were not even being offered, I, no matter how much of a pay cut I would take. 
So because I couldn't do what I wanted to do, which were those dramas, I decided I'm going to stop doing what I've been doing. And that was a big risk. I didn't know how long I was going to go with that work. Called my agent. Shed many a tear on Camilla's shoulder. Because I'm like, ah, you know I need work. I need work for my own significance, for my sense of accomplishment. That bottle of whatever I'm drinking is going to look better earlier and earlier in the day. Well, luckily, we had our first newborn, this creature that's going to be introduced into the world. And I remember telling myself, when you get wobbly, when you feel like you're lacking significance, go to your son. You will never say I spent too much time with my newborn. Well, almost two years went by and I didn't get work. Now, when did the work finally come to me? What happened? I found anonymity again. People were like, where is he? He's not in the theater. I didn't see him on the beach. He's not... Where'd he go? Well, we've forgotten him. And after I was forgotten, then I became a new novel good idea. Let me give you a little news flash. There ain't nothing out there can kill Ron Woodruff in 30 days. So I unbranded to rebrand. If you know you made the decision for the right reason, toe the line, support each other, outlast it, it'll boomerang back and the opportunities will come your way. Hey, Matthew, it's Dave Crosby up here in Seattle. I am the father to Claire, Carson, June, and Millie. Nice. We like to make music together. I'm also a husband to Ashley. Ashley is amazing, but I'm constantly falling short of that really high bar you set for me back when you were doing romantic comedies. <laughs> so what do we do now? Your life seems to be just filled with green lights. Your ascent in Hollywood was incredibly fast, and you're very successful. But of course, like anyone, you've had your red lights. And in the book, you talk about how you can take red lights and turn them into green lights to make yourself better. All destruction eventually leads to construction. All death eventually leads to birth. All pain eventually leads to pleasure. It's a matter of how we see the challenge in front of us and how we engage with it. Persist, pivot, or concede. In the book, you talk about the importance of knowing when to persist, pivot, or concede especially as it relates to red and green lights. Can you just talk a little bit more about that philosophy? How do you know which one's the green light? It's intellect and instinct. I mean, it, this is, I think, part of the art of living. You can't just say, oh, always persist. Well, if, if you're all about persistence, which is a great value and something we all need, but if you persist and try to get something done over and 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 still get the same outcome that you didn't want, we have to go, wait a minute, persistence is not my, my, my jam here. <laughs> I need to dance, I need to pivot, because I'm not getting what I want by going at it the same way. Well, maybe it wasn't about banging our head against the door. Actually, all we need to do is reach down because the damn thing was unlocked. It's a lot easier than we thought. Just turn the knob, it's open. And then the wave the white flag concession is, a, is an extreme form of pivoting. There's just some times where you go, I'm barking up the wrong tree. You know what? I thought this is what I wanted. It's not. A lot of times it's not even which decision you make. It's just make one and go for it. Don't get caught up on the perfect decision. Just choose one and commit to it. It'll reveal if it's the right one or not, or show you a new one. Life is our resume. It is our story to tell, and the choices we make write the chapters. Can we live in a way where we look forward to looking back? What's your story? This is mine so far. Green lights. Here's to catching more of them. Just keep living. McConaughey. Camilla, I could see her. She'd be over there on the couch, sitting there going like, oh, I'm not even close to ready. I'm getting a foot rub from your pop. And pop would just probably looked at me and smiled and go, uh-huh, got that? Take your time, son. We ain't going anywhere right now. 